the church have to get back to sound doctrine, family is being undermined. The family is being attacked directly. Right. What is a man? What is a woman? Nuclear family. Right. You go back to the BLM manifesto. We want to what? Dismantle the heteronormative nuclear family. Right. And so the church has to do that. So this is my question, Brian, because man, we you you've done a good job of laying it out uh, how we got here, what the problem is today. What continues to push it, right? Pop culture, wokeness, all these things. How do, where do we go from here? How, what's the solution? How do we, how do we overcome where we are? So number one, for, for me, it was, so look at this, going back to the subtitle of my book. So America's Black Father Ashes Crisis and how the Christian church helped me overcome it. I think this starts with the church. I think the church, we have to get back to a steady, uh, stream a steady diet of sound doctrine uh, around what uh, around the the, the 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 theology of the family God's view of the family the biblical worldview of the family and we ha- we have to robustly present this particularly in our day we need to turn the volume up on that particularly in our day because the family is being undermined the family is being attacked directly right? What is a man? What is a woman? Nuclear family, right? You go back to the BLM manifesto. We want to what? Dismantle the heteronormative nuclear family, right? And so the church has to do that. Now, I I think what also has to happen along with that is, you know, we we have to take it outside of the four walls of the church into our communities and our homes. And we're going to have to disciple and train people. We're going to have to disciple this generation. You know, we're going to have to bring God's, 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 Anecdote, antidote, antidote, right? I didn't say, I didn't mean to say anecdote, but <laughs> God's antidote to the masses. That family is the answer. Family is the key, right? Under God's leadership, under the the guise of the of the lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ, we got to say, listen. Um, the antidote to a hundred hundreds of kids running around in Chicago is fathers, my, my guy. Mm-hmm. Is fathers, right? Um, the antidote to you know, kids in, in the school to prison pipeline, so to speak, are more fathers at home supporting their children. Thomas Sowell said this, man. Uh, he said, listen, I don't care how much money you pour into education. If there's not folks at home making children go to bed on time, feeding them, making sure they have what they need, getting them up on time, making them do their homework, I don't care how much money you pour into education, you're not gonna, you're not gonna close any kind of educational academic gap. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It's not gonna happen. It's not gonna Absolutely. happen. So it, it, again, it goes back to the family. I'll even go back to Lyndon B. Johnson's statement. Listen, unless we endeavor to do, you know, to robustly feed and, and fuel the family, the, the, the thriving of the family, you know, society is going to decay, right? And so uh, I like my, I like the big homie Delano Squires. He and I had a chance to have lunch together uh, a few uh, a month ago, and um, you know, he he and I talked about how uh, you know he he was saying, you know. And I quoted him in the book, you know, how he, he said, listen, we're talking about any and everything in barbershop. We're talking about game. You know, we talk about who the goat is, you know, which is a relevant conversation, by the way. Um, Very much so. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about the goat. We're talking about this. We're talking about that. But we're not we, we need to have just as robust, you know, an energy around in our, in our community. When we see a father, the, the, the family is hurting and the father absence rates are hurting and it's at a crisis level. We need to have robust conversations about the importance of marriage. Right. So I think, again, we start with the church. We, we, you know, we go from the church to taking God's idea and God's kingdom to the to the masses. Right. And we have these robust, you know, community uh, uh, kinds of conversations amongst people. We have to have people who role model. You know, I had role models that I saw who were modeling marriage, man, and, and making marriage something beautiful. You know, so making family something beautiful, fathers in the saddle, something beautiful with, the, you know, present active assistant, fathers in the home, something beautiful. Right. Let's get back to that. You know, we have to not be ashamed to say, listen, God's way of doing things is listen. Um, so here, here's the uh, uh, what many of the think tanks. I got this from Larry Elder as well. And I started delving into it and saying, wow, wow, that's that's a thing. You know, so think tanks on both the, the political left and the political right all say the same thing. They say, listen, if you do not if you graduate from high school, at least graduate from high school, um, you do not have children before you get married. Mm-hmm. Right. At least graduate from high school. Don't have ch- ch- children before you get married. Get a job, man. Right. Don't quit that job for you get another one. Most people who do that have no problems in America. 
you know, virtually speaking, you know, that you, in the most folks, folks are not in poverty, right? You put, you set yourself up to have a, a family sort of, you know, a, a family framework, you know what I'm saying? You haven't had kids out of wedlock, so on. you set yourself up to do some good things. And so that's, you know, they call it the millennial success sequence. We got to talk about stuff like that. Yeah. How you, you, you know, God's ethic for, you know, a sexual ethic. We've got to, we've got to turn the volume up on God's sexual ethic, man, and, and combat these ideas that are coming through pop culture. You know, we've got to say, get away from the ratchetness look, look and point to the real uh, impact of what that does to our community. Like, look, you can talk about this stuff all day. Talk about how, you know, we're giving away, you know, uh, you know, these, these sexual escapades and, you know, you, you vote and we can get it on. Well, listen, yeah, you can talk about that, but you're fueling the father absence, you know, pathology by doing that. But, but if you get, if you, if you change your mindset, you know, think about this, we talked about in two decades, how, uh, father absence went from 25% to 75% just in two decades. I wonder what would happen in just two decades if we had key people who were modeling and yes. key voices in our in our in our generation, key voices and individuals who were turning this thing around and, and less this down with righteousness, up with up with righteousness. You know, right. and, you know, down with righteousness, up with righteousness. And we had key individuals who were doing it. And that's the and we were, I mean, we militaristically, you know, we're marching to the beat of that drum. I wonder what would happen in two decades if key individuals, if we could, if, if we as a people and like, like, okay, so we, we can do that at a community level, but I wonder if at a cultural level, we stop promoting the artists who are promoting righteousness, righteousness, and we had artists who were promoting uh, a public responsibility, you know, relationship responsibility, sexual responsibility. You know what I'm saying? I wonder if we yeah. had that, what would happen? What, what would happen if your favorite artist said it was cool to do your homework and pull your pants up? I wonder what would happen. You know what I'm saying? In two decades, what could what would happen? Like we could cut that 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 rate in half. We could cut poverty in half. You know, we would see what we were seeing in the 1920s and 30s when black poverty was on the decline. We can go right back to that. We could. I really believe that. And so we're the ones who are saying, "Yo, we have a, a high view of our people. We have we we believe in black efficacy." And then they're looking at us saying. You racist and you and you and you sympathizing with white white supremacy because you talking about hard work and you talking about <laughs> you talking about <laughs> you talking about whiteness and, and, and you know you you you're invoking you know logical thought and and personal responsibility and and all these things right hard work you know anyway so I, I, I to, to answer your question Mo I think it starts with the church. And, 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 and us mobilizing God's message about the kingdom of God and his way of doing things, mobilizing that into the culture and modeling it, exemplifying it, you know, having robust conversations around it, you know, get, you know, m mentoring people, going to the schools, mentoring. Uh, I love what Governor Ron DeSantis was doing down in Florida. He had the Responsible Fatherhood Act. He was putting money where his mouth is. He was saying, listen, let's put let's put some funding. Now, again, that's not to say let's depend upon government. But what I'm saying is if government is going to get involved anyway, then they should get involved at a, at a level that says instead of instead of pouring money into crime remediation, instead of pouring money, I'm not, this is not a defund the police message, but, it, but you're going to have to put money into, into jails, prisons, so forth and so on because of father absence, because that's going to fuel your, your, your prisons. Well, why don't you put some money in under like the other, this ounce of cure is better than a pound, you know, pound of cure is better than an ounce of remedy. Oh, uh, how did I get that messed up anyway? Um, <laughs> so why don't you put some, some funds and effort and energy into helping young fathers become responsible fathers? Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Why don't you, why don't you put some funds in that? Because guess what? You're going to pay less money for that than it is going to pay for, than you're going to pay for what's going to impact the community when people are, you know, drive by shooting and all of that jazz. Unless it's an ulterior motive and the drive by shooting and the keeping the kids in jail is actually working to benefit some. <sighs> That's a whole that other conversation. It yeah, is a whole no. other conversation. That's a whole other conversation. Um, <laughs> for everybody who's watched, you know, and been with us for a while, our conversation with um, Pastor Alton was along this same vein and the work that he's doing down in Birmingham with black men and black families and encouraging, you know, the couples in his church to actually get married. And what does it mean to be married and why is mm. God instituted the marriage, you know, and the, the unit of marriage and things like that. And so, um, yeah, I just wanted to, if you haven't seen that episode with Alton, what's Al Alton Hardy, yeah. um, from last year, go back and watch it because he's talking about these exact same things in regards to, you know, what happens when you actually bring a couple together and what is the fruit of, of marriage. Mm. Mm. Yes. I saw that episode. I saw that episode. And by the way, I actually wanted to send him a copy of my book as well. Cause that's when I saw the episode, I was real inspired by what he was, what he was talking about. And I, you know, I wanted to send that resource to him.